You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. Living in the New Paradigm with host Mikaya. Mikaya will empower you to become aware of your vast potential that's available in each and every one of us in alignment with our soul's desires. So please welcome the host of Living in a New Paradigm, Mikaya Hart. Hello, everyone. This is Mikaya Hart with Living in a New Paradigm, uh, brought to us by BBM Global Networks and TuneIn Radio. And um, for those of you who've listened to the show before, um, I have some fairly radical views on spirituality. And in general, what I, um, what I prefer to say about my work, rather than use the word spirituality, which does put a lot of people off, I prefer to say that what I'm doing is teaching about the true nature of reality. Um, I've written a number of books, and my most recent one was called Life, Lies, and Sex, A User's Guide to Being in a Body because really there's a great deal of nonsense talked about what it's like to be in a human body. And, um, yeah, who chooses that and who manifests that body? And there are many, many questions that we need to ask. Um, today I'm going to interview Varushka Normando. Um, and Varushka also has some fairly radical views on the nature of reality. Um, and I think I'm going to let her introduce herself in her own words. Um, so, Varushka, are you there? I am. Aloha. You are. Great. Good to have you. So, um, <laughs> why don't you say something about what you do? I loved what you sent me in, but I feel like it's better expressed by you, yourself. So, it's all yours. Okay. Talk away. <laughs> Thank you. Well, aloha. And I was actually hoping to hear you define it, but I actually also always <laughs> make people tell me <laughs> who they yeah, are and what yeah. they think they are. And I think it, it's one of the most um, challenging things for anyone. Um, and I'm also such a <laughs> multi-passionate person. Um, but basically, um I am a healer and I am an energy medicinista. Basically, I really um, value and um, work with energy medicine because at the end of the day, that's really the only thing that's ever helped me through. And there's various methods and ways to go about, um, you know, different channels of energy medicine, whether it is the power of thought or Reiki or different other energy, uh, hands-on energy work, um, whether it's flower essences, um, whether it's just through the power of creativity and art or breath work, you know, it is really more the, the finer, subtler yeah. things that really make up our life, you know, our life force, basically. Yes. So, yes. Um, and I think one yeah, of the so things... I'm, I'm technically one of the things, consider yeah. myself... Okay, go ahead. I was going to say one I of the things I love about a healing you is... artist based on everything I've yes. learned through my own experience of trauma, being in a body, dealing with depression, being a global citizen and having lived and grown up all around the world. I feel like, you know, I, I, I teach and share through my experience and what I know works. Right. And that is part of what I love about you, that you focus on the, individual you're it, it because that's how we change the world by being fully who we are each of us being fully who we are and living our original t intention that we chose when we were born and um 
you know, we're told, as I was saying earlier, we're told so many lies and um, we need to find out what is our personal truth and live that personal truth. And I feel like you really help people to do that, to embrace the personal, our personal paths. That's what matters. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So um, tell me, talk to me about your art. When did you start doing art? Well, I guess I've always had um, a creative and artistic bent as far as ideas and creativity and thinking outside the box um, goes. Um, but I've never actually had uh, experience with hands-on, you know, artistry painting, that type of thing. And um, when Mm -hmm. I came to the Big Island um, to live once again in 2013, I um, had just a much different experience than I had had in previous years, and I felt extremely isolated. I didn't connect with community. Um, Everyone who was close to me before seemed to have um, changed their lives or moved off island And I was walking around Hilo Bay with a heavy head and just a heavy heart. And I saw this art in a store and just picking up these images of these very innocent hula girls totally touched my heart. And I couldn't believe how much I was affected by looking at this art. And um, Mm -hmm. then I found out, so I I didn't have any money and I, I put it on my credit card. I just felt like I really had to have these images and I brought them home and I had brought my jewel a bead collection with me that I collected for 20 years but never made anything with and I set up these images and I started making jewelry even though I didn't know anything I just let myself be guided by how I was touched in my heart by these hula girls and um, then little by little I I got to find out that that artist lived on the big island for 30 years and that he did art at the warm ponds at our at our sacred hot springs every single friday for 25 years and i i'd heard about it but it didn't mean that much to me because you know i just appreciated his art and then one friday i just decided oh it's a friday i'm going to drive by the hot springs and i ended up meeting him and really connecting And then one year, three times I went there and met him and just felt very moved. I didn't, you know, and he would say, why don't you come and do art with us? And I would refuse and say, oh, no, no, I'm not an artist. And then in February 2015, (laughs) my grandmother passed away in Germany and she was my angel. She was like my mother of compassion and unconditional Mm -hmm. love. And she was 93 when she passed, but I came back to the island again, very heavy hearted. And it was a Friday and I was driving out of Pahoa and I thought, oh, I could go by and say hi to Barry. And I drove by and he said again, why don't you do art with us? And then I thought, you know what? I never go to the hot springs. I never give myself this time. And here's my personal Jesus who changed, touched my life, inviting me for the third time and I just went, okay. And my partner supported me. He said, I, you know, why don't you go to the Warm Ponds every Friday? And so it was one of the hardest things to do to start something late in life, but just commit to it. And every Friday I would go. Mm. And, you know, they say the, the more you know, the less you need. But, of course, I would come with free <laughs> bags full of art supplies because I had no idea what I was doing. But I would sit down and just start from scratch, and I got to sit next to him. And nobody there gave me lessons. They didn't give me tips. They would have if I had asked. But I just allowed myself to start making art. And it changed mm. every part of my life to make a commitment, to push yourself, mm-hmm. and to not judge. And the key was to not judge what was coming out and to trust the process and um you know, three years later, I was invited to have an art show, and it, and at the mm. end of that, they asked me to have another one, <laughs> and That's and then um, it changed my mm. photography. It just had an impact on my photography, mm-hmm. just giving myself that time. 
Mm. That's great. Um, we, we're up for a commercial break right now, but I do want to talk more about, about this because I think it's fascinating. Your journey is fascinating. And we learn so much from each other's personal journeys. Um, right now, we're up for a c- quick commercial break. Um, this is Mikaya Hart with Living in the New Paradigm, and we'll be right back in a few minutes. There are artists, and then there's Alice Asmar. This award-winning artist has spent her entire life devoted to her artistic pursuits and has had a lifelong fascination with American Indians of the southwestern United States. Her book, Dance to the Great Spirit, showcases her drawings and paintings inspired by sacred rituals of the Pueblo Indians, and four of her lithographs are in permanent collection at the National Museum of American History and the Smithsonian Institution in Washington, D.C. She is one of four artists in the United States to win a Woolley Fellowship for study in Paris at Les Colday Beaux-Arts and has been featured in numerous publications. She's exhibited at the world's most prestigious museums and galleries and recently won a 20-year service award from the Burbank City Council and the inaugural art competition of the Foundation of the United States in Paris. Visit www.asmarart.com, www.aliceasmarinternational.com, and email alice at aliceasmar at aol.com. Attorney Renee Marie Smith is changing the way we sell real estate. She wrote a series of books called My Short Sale Guru Guides for all real estate practitioners. Whether you're a homeowner wanting to understand the process, an agent who has been handling short sales for years, or an industry analyst wanting to know how short sales impact your business, Renee uses her vast real estate experience to take a comprehensive look at the recent market phenomena while relaying it in an easy-to-understand format. Through her company, Smith Title Services, Renee has counseled thousands of of short sale participants and processed in excess of a thousand short sales. Her knowledge is transformational for real estate professionals and laymen alike, and her live presentations provide people the opportunity to ask specific questions about their issues. Buy her books and schedule her to speak at your next event. Visit www.smithtitleservices.com or call 305 705 3428 or email her at renee at smithtitleservices.com. Isn't it time to sell your property today? Learn the My Short Sale Guru way. Hello, everyone. This is me, Kaya Hart, with Living in the New Paradigm. Um, I'm talking with Varushka Normando, um, who is a, a healer and an artist. Um, and we were just discussing the importance of being able to acknowledge that we know nothing. The, uh, the, the rational brain always wants to know everything. And the truth is, the rational brain um, it, it can't know everything. And if we give it too much power... Um, we're going to lose our way because true wisdom, true wisdom stems from within and it's actually a physical sensation. Um, Yes, it's important to acknowledge that the rational brain is a very useful tool, but it's not meant to be in charge. And what that often means is that we feel like we know nothing. So um, in your personal journey, Varushka, did you – do you feel like uh, that's been an important thing for you to learn and to teach others? To learn that I know nothing? Is that um, the question? Yes. Yes. Yeah. I mean, well, um, I think I give, I, I, mean, I think the way you, that how, I share yeah, is by asking questions. Because, hmm. You yes. know, we all have such a different life experience and and different beliefs and perspectives that if I tell my perspective as a hard truth, you're going to turn people off, you know. And it's taken me this long to realize that even if people don't resonate with me or I feel like I failed them because they're not going to relate to me, I've also come to realize that I've still done my job because people need to know when something's for them and when something's not for them. And then in time, they might remember that, you know, when they cross that bridge, they might remember what I shared or the questions I posed. And so I realize now too, that some of the people that helped me the most and then disappointed me the most, they still help me. Because they were part of my yes. ladder and my process, you know? Mm. And yes. uh, that's just exactly. been a really interesting place to come to, to, to realize that there really is no failure, you know? 
and people will yes. hurt you and disappoint you. But in the end of the day, I needed that. And then I trust and have yeah. faith that people will need that, you know, and if the people yes. need my medicine, they're going to show up, but I can't force it down anyone's throat. And that's why for me, art has become so important because, um, you know, like visual art and doing my photography and my work that way, it's because people are going to see it and they're going to be touched subconsciously mm-hmm. or consciously, yes. you know, and my, my intention that I've infused into the imagery while making a prayer or while seeing something with my eye, only how I can see it, it'll still touch people even if they can't understand it. And so to me, that is part of the energy medicine because it's beyond the words, right? It is the beauty beyond the, words. Beyond the mm-hmm. mind. Mm-hmm. Yes, exactly. Exactly. And um, I, I feel you're so absolutely right that sometimes, you know, I, well, it's, what I feel like is I'm, it's purely accidental if I can help someone. It's really n- <laughs> nothing to do with what I say or do because I'm going to say and do what's right for me, what is the truth for me. And sometimes people are going to react negatively to that. But sometimes that's what needs to happen. It's part of their journey. It's part of my journey. Um, One of the people who was in my life who was my greatest teacher was my father. And he was really a difficult man, a very difficult man. And what he embodied for me, what he taught me, was about right use of power because he was abusive, which is wrong use of power. And I really, really learned that I did not want to live that way. So, um, you know, I had a difficult relationship with him all my life. And um, then when he died, um, his energy was so benevolent. And I was forced to come to the conclusion that I had chosen him to embody this, uh, to be a jerk in my life so that I would have a fast track lesson in right use of power. And that was really an amazing and very, very wonderful um, realization for me because I, I always tell people now that my dad's dead, he's he's one of my absolute best friends, you know, and he was mm-hmm. one of my best teachers when I was alive. And I wouldn't wish it on anyone, but um, I feel <laughs> yeah. like – it was it was something I chose because I wanted that fast track lesson, and I got it. I understand mm-hmm. right use of power. So yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. the lessons come in all kinds of guises. And it's going to so, take its time, and it unveil like the beauty yes. and depth of it only unveils itself in time, and there is no rules to time. <laughs> yeah, there's no rules. No. No. Yeah. Um, I love I love what you say. You call, your website is gypsyrosechariot.com. Am I right about that? Yeah. 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 So, and um, I love what you say in your blurb um, that it's the rose of your heart uncovering and discovering your unique splendid scent and creating the safety and courage to let it bloom. That's so beautiful. It's uh, your words are really beautiful, um, and and your art is really quite stunning, and, and you know I want to say to our listeners that I do feel I'm a writer, and I love words, but I do feel that um, art and music reach people on a different level than words because they bypass the rational brain, and that makes them mm. incredible. powerful so yes i'm i'm really glad that you started doing your art even though you you avoided that destiny for a while because you thought you knew nothing and that well, in itself just is a to great... be clear that art on the website is that of my um my mentors barry wilkinson and does say that is not my art just to be clear <laughs> i Uh-oh. i work to me, his art is so touching, and that's why he's given me permission to use it. And I use it liberally because, to me, it's so it just speaks so much. Um, but I so have seen your your own art, I've seen, you know. Yes, okay. and it's great that you've got his art there. But I have seen your art too, and it's it's quite it's very powerful. 
It's really very powerful. It's you, I can stare at some of those images for a long time and just allow myself to be immersed, to immerse me, if you like. Anyway, we're up for another quick commercial break right now. Um, so uh, so I, this is Mikaya Hart with Living in the New Paradigm, brought to us by BBM Global Networks and TuneIn Radio. And we'll be by, right back to talk more with Farushka. For over 50 years, Evelyn Stapula has been a loving advocate for people with disabilities throughout the state of Pennsylvania. President and founder of Big Heart Bridges, her organization actively campaigns for legislation and support of civil liberties that meet the needs of disabled individuals with housing, transportation, and employment. Ms. Dapula has joined forces with a variety of esteemed organizations that advocate for the disabled. She serves on the board of the United Cerebral Palsy of Pittsburgh and the Governor's Cabinet and Advisory Committee for People with Disabilities, and she is a consultant for the Pennsylvania Governor's Conference for Women. Her many efforts have led to the implementation of a transportation program for the disabled with the Access Paratransit System of Allegheny County. Evelyn Stapoulis drives daily to serve the interests of the disabled, to protect their freedoms, and enable them to live normal public lifestyles. To learn more, please call 412-491-2605 or email Evelyn at ers92645 at verizon.net. WikiWags brings harmony back into your home for male dogs and their owners. Inventor and entrepreneur Linda Jangula has created the disposable doggy diaper wraps made with the male dog in mind. The built-in wicking ability prevents rashing and other potential health issues for your dog. Each wrap comes in four sizes and has dual reattachable magic tabs for easy adjustments. And each size has a 7-inch logo strip for adjustability so they are comfortable and easy to use. No more fuss, just leave the mess to us. Whether you're in or out, your dog will be free to run about. Stop cleaning and start enjoying your home, and you can even leave your dog alone. To order your WikiWags, visit wikiwags.com, or to find out where to buy WikiWags in your town, visit mywikiwags.com and start enjoying having man's best friend around. Hello, everyone. This is me, Kaya Hart, with Living in the New Paradigm. And today I'm talking with Varushka Normando. Um, Varushka, what I, I would like you to talk about um, the value of um, the power of tapping on the meridians and that, that, that whole system um, and, and how it can be utilized to help us to stay in a place of, well, it can help us in all kinds of ways. So I'll, I'll let you explain how it helps us. Okay. Um, I'm not the authority on explaining the details, but maybe that's <laughs> what makes me a good lay person about it is that anyone can do it. You know, it's, you can't do anything wrong. It's, you're not going to have any negative side effects and, you know, it's safe for children and you don't have to believe in anything and um, basically, it's just percussive tapping with your dominant hand, you know, index and middle finger um, on your acupressure points. And there is a sequence that's recommended and that was initially, um, you know, invented by Gary Craig, who was an engineer with a background in NLP. But, you know, he came from a very logical place in, in figuring this out. Um, and so there is a sequence, and you can find it everywhere on YouTube. Um, but really, I recommend to people that the best thing you can really do is honor what is and the emotion that you're dealing with. And why I've gone down the road in studying emotional freedom technique, um, I've been doing it since 2005, um, is because it actually clears trauma from the body. And the tapping part is really... Um, sort of the the valve, the release valve for the psyche. So you could be in talk therapy for years, which I was, and not have any shift in your reality. And, mm. you know, I was psychologically right. hip to a story, you know, from when I was five years old and I had a traumatic event. And um, 
I had PTSD, you know, most of my adult life without really knowing I actually had it, you know, because I was going to hypnotherapy and all different kinds of therapies. So I was always able to explain it psychologically or intellectually, but I never changed it from my body until I tried tapping in Austin, Texas. And Mm -hmm. I just was in like a group circle and kind of tapped on that situation once again that I was, you know, did therapy on for 15 years. And suddenly with the tapping on the body and tracking with my mind the memories and remembering the feelings, you know, the shock, the fear, the Mm -hmm. grief, and then speaking it and saying, I love and accept myself anyway, it just mm-hmm. it totally collapsed it. It's like it popped the bubbles that were still mm-hmm. in time and place lodged in my meridian system. And so that's how I best describe mm-hmm. it. Like like there was space taking up in my gut like like bricks, like gray heavy cement bricks that suddenly disappeared mm-hmm. and were no longer to be found and that you couldn't place back together, you know? So suddenly I could Mm, speak about the event without any sense of personal history. It was more like something I read about in a book that I could share about. There was not, and Mm. then this happened, and then I was triggered again. There was, the trigger was gone. And it was like the next Mm. morning I woke up, I could feel like I had a new lease on life, you know? And and then it was Mm. that classic moment where you're like, I want this for everyone. This is possible. And it only took acknowledging the feelings and saying, I accept myself anyway. And the beauty, why I feel like tapping works so much doing it with another person or in a group is that someone's looking at you. And then usually if you're working with a practitioner, they're speaking to you the feelings you told them you yeah. had about the situation. So if someone's telling you, modeling to you, like Kirtan style, even though I have this terrible memory, I love and forgive myself. And they're saying it to you, looking in your eyes, and then you say it back, and it's almost like, wow, you're finally seen. Like you're finally validated, yes. and you're being witnessed yes. in your grief. So that's why it kind mm-hmm. of hits on a range of things and while you're tapping it's Mm -hmm. like you're cross-referencing your psyche and your body and that's why it kind of gets to neutralize it in your nervous system and that's why it's called emotional freedom because you literally then are free of it I mean you might cry in that moment with a memory but you're then composting and releasing it into the ethers and so that's why I um I'd say that anyone can do it if they could just tap themselves on their chest and like with an open hand Mm -hmm. tapping on your chest as if you were calming a baby, that type of tapping. And if you could just identify, Mm -hmm. mostly people have a hard time identifying what they're even feeling, right? So you really just honor what it is. And like, even Mm -hmm. though I don't feel anything right now because I'm so overwhelmed, I love and accept myself. So, and then once Mm -hmm. you say that, it kind of gives you this release and relief. And then usually people start to cry because then they're like, oh, I'm so in shock, overwhelmed because I'm so in shock because I'm really sad and scared that I'm going to, you know, maybe lose my home or lose my love. I mean, you know, our biggest fears are loss of love and and death. Right. So it's kind of like yes, everything yes. whittles down to that loss that we're either going to the fear of death or fear of losing love from, you know, the parent yeah. or partner or somebody. Right. And or, mm-hmm. you know, if you're losing a job or anyway. So I think everything ends up whittling down to that. So if we can just acknowledge and speak the fears, it just loses the charge mm-hmm. and it gets us present and it it gets that neutralized. And so the tapping is kind of, again, that release valve that's the like soothing the baby, like our inner child, really. Yes. And the best yes. thing is it's a method we can self-apply. No one has to touch us. Mm-hmm. Um, and right. if you right. are like in dire need, if you can pull someone in your space aside and say, hey, can you just, you know, stand here with me for five minutes? And even if you do your own dialogue and say, can you just repeat this after me? And they just mirror you. 
um, like the benefit of it is priceless. But, it, you know, it's like anything else yes. is taking the time. But I think in our Western mm-hmm. society, it's so helpful to actually verbalize what we're feeling and then have someone acknowledge yes. it. Yes. Yes, I really agree with you. And I want to talk more about that. Um, we're up for a commercial break right now. This is Mikaya Hart with Living in the New Paradigm, brought to us by BBM Global Networks and TuneIn Radio. And we'll be right back in a few minutes. Horses, mystical, present, past and future, all in one. Wild, free, domestic and healing for everyone. Betty Hames knows this and has put her horses to good use with Nature Connect Equine Coaching. Her mission is to help people affected by the loss of hope and trust in their lives and to rediscover the wonders of nature through nature-connected learning so they can rebuild their lives and live peacefully with newfound hope, trust, and joy. Betty Hames is also a certified elite life coach, a Washington State certified counselor, and chemical dependency professional. She is passionate about partnering nature with healing, and through horses, she sees amazing results and transformation in lives that might have otherwise been lost. Call 509-830-9225 and visit her at HamesLifeCoaching.com. Hold your horses. You're in for the ride of your life. Intergenerational programming is uniting America due to the tireless efforts of Dr. Ramona Frischman. Retired from the Miami-Dade County Public School System, Dr. Frischman continues to develop intergenerational learning programs aimed to improve the lives of children, young adults, and seniors through unique strategies and public policy in order to establish a mutually supportive agenda. She views intergenerational programs as a resource for policymakers and the general public on economic, social, and personal initiatives that govern our society. Her work bridges the generational gap, providing many individuals the opportunity to explore areas of common ground and celebrate each other's diversity. Contact Ramona Frischman at RamonaLong at AOL.com or visit www.gu.org to learn more about intergenerational programming. Hello, everyone. This is Mikaya Hart with Living in the New Paradigm, and I'm talking with Varushka Normando. We've been discussing the emotional freedom technique, which is about tapping on the different meridians in order to release old stuck emotions. Um, I think it's incredibly common in Western society for people to be... um, Well, I'm not sure what the right words are, to be stuck in old trauma. Um, You know, it's called PTSD, but uh, that's often only applied to people who have had what they can perceive with the rational brain was a really traumatic event. And But the fact is, all of us have experienced difficult negative emotions at some point, and all emotion needs to be expressed. I mean, the word emotion means moving out. We need to allow emotions a place to be expressed. And these days it can happen very quickly and easily. And the emotional freedom technique is one of the ways that we can do that. And the other thing that's really of huge value about the emotional freedom technique is the um, the concept of accepting ourselves. And um, I feel like, um, well, yes, say some more about that, Varushka, because I feel like that's so important. And you really understand yeah. the need to do that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I, you know, I grew up um, in uh, on the West Coast in Hawaii and then um, with my German mother in Germany, and I was schooled in Germany. So, you know, I got a healthy dose of the classical Germanic, um, you know, contrast of right, wrong, good, bad. And one does not do this unless this and this and this. And I mean, I was very, I mean, my parents were hippies and open-minded, but I took on a very um, militant kind of internal dialogue from, from the culture, you know, because, you know, going to school, no one was like my right. parents, you know, my teachers and the society. And so my, and and then I was very judgmental about my parents, you know, they're so immoral and, you know, no one does it like they do. So I didn't really have a place to go because, you know, they were rebels, but I was rebelling against them. 
so I had very strong <laughs> judgments and self judgments and and also you know my own parents' criticism on me or my perceived criticism and so my i was I have always been such an idealist, you know, and that's mm. a really awful place to be, you know that is the perfectionist yeah. right. Um, the perfectionistic right. mind, yeah. which can never be happy. <laughs> no, exactly. So if you have such, yeah. And then I, I, I went on a very strict spiritual journey as a as a teen teenager, you know. So like trying to rebel against the normal world, but um, you're only making the ego wrong and glo- and making everything wrong about the ego and and about society so it's like you really there's no joy in that and um so (laughs) it's good to have principles and structure but i definitely but then at some point you're going to have to rebel against what you set up for yourself if you're not finding freedom and and joy in it so um you know i can say that i have tried everything and i'm definitely a cosmic detective and always ask like (laughs) For me, I always have asked the question why, and there's always another why behind the answer. Like, my why will never stop. So, you know, I've had to give up on that, too. (laughs) So that brings us to acceptance, right, and self-forgiveness and forgiveness of others. And so I think that's why EFT was such a profound healer for me because, um, you know, knowing uh, being psychologically hip and in and hip and all the Zen koans and and Buddhist teachings and things like that. Um, but you know, as as we all know, the only way out is through. And it's really humbling yes. when you realize that you have that you're like the most uh, judgmental and opinionated person and feel like the biggest <laughs> failure. You know, all of those things. So you know, you can't win. Yes. It's like you have superiority mm-hmm. and inferiority com- complexes, right? So I yes. had a lot yes, of the two victim go consciousness. Mm. Yeah, exactly. Mm. And um, mm. so that's why the acceptance, like to say, even though I am a total victim and I know everything, I'm still a good person. And it's like, yeah, it just takes collapses, everything that's been holding up those beliefs. And then you're like, oh, you mean I'm okay? You mean I'm a value? I'm an decent human being yeah. still you know I'm, and yeah. <laughs> um yeah. that part of acceptance and for the western mind you know like we just have a society that's set up like that to have um you know yes, exactly. goals and mm-hmm. and rules and all of those things but i feel like i've had to go to every end of the polarities Mm -hmm. and really experience them, Mm -hmm. everything I've ever judged for myself so that I could go, oh, this, you know, oh, now I understand. And now I can totally forgive them and then forgive myself and practice the self-compassion, you know, and ultimately self-compassion and self-forgiveness has been the biggest healer. And um, yes. you know, right now I'm in that place of what you're sharing about your father that I'm really feeling like, like there really is no healing. There really is just letting go. There's just letting yes. go and releasing. And when you release mm-hmm. those judgments and release the even the goals, it's like being stepping into that place of trust and faith in, in your heart truth, mm-hmm. what I call like the path of heart courage. That is the radical mm. acceptance. And, you know, by the yes. way, I ask, I absolutely don't recommend to anyone choosing radical forgiveness or radical acceptance because <laughs> then you're really asking you for a crash course because uh, I did that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you yeah, know, always yeah. choose the grace and ease part. But, you know, we're all wired yeah. differently. We're going to get to where we get to. But right now I'm really in this mode of, you know, after the acceptance, the gratitude and really, you know, you can't really fake it till you make it. But when you get to that place where all the perpetrators really were like, they deserve an Oscar, like their performance (laughs) made you so strong. 
Their performance, oh, no funny. one could have made a better bad guy or, you know, <laughs> boogeyman. Yeah. And um, yeah. so yeah. for me, I'm on this path of thank you, of finding thank you. And that's the real yeah. release. Like that's, there's so much healing in that. Yes. And I've been yes. really that's grateful very for that experience. Yeah. Good. Well, um, we're up for a commercial break right now. Um, we'll talk more about this in just a moment. This is Mikaya Hart with Living in the New Paradigm, and we'll be right back with you. French Rastafarian baker Chef Oug Mat is a fourth-generation baker and has worked in 11 countries across three continents. Born in Mulhouse, France, he began apprenticing in his father's bakery at age 12 and has devoted his life to learning cultures of the world from inside kitchens across the globe. He also teaches traditional French baking by hosting demonstrations and classes, and his passion for baking is reflected in his delicious confections. With a deep respect for discipline and his Rastafarian way of life, Chef Ouvmat exemplifies commitment to tradition and culture in a global world. Traveling extensively and combining a myriad of flavors into his recipes, Chef Ougmat brings a unique approach to baking. To read more about the French Rastafarian baker, visit www.frenchchefoug.com. That's H-U-G-U-E-S. Bon appétit and bless up. Introducing BetterHomeAndGarden.com. That's www.betterhomeandgarden.com with just the letter N in Better Home and Garden. BetterHomeAndGarden.com offers you the highest quality products on the market that are environmentally safe and effective and to make them available to you at the lowest possible prices. BetterHomeAndGarden.com understands that kind of creativity and do-it-yourself attitude. Thus, we developed our website, BetterHomeAndGarden.com. BetterHomeAndGarden.com offers you the following products right online. Bath, bedding, collectibles, craft, sewing and hobby, food and beverage, furniture, home decor, kitchen and dining, lamps and lighting, large appliances, musical instruments, outdoor cooking, patio items, pet supplies, plant and garden, rug and floor covering, small appliances, travel and luggage, and so much more. Better Home and Garden is an online retailer offering a wide variety of high-quality brand name merchandise at discount prices. Our service is personal and we aim to please. Visit us at www.betterhomeandgarden.com. Make your home your own. Hello, everyone. This is me, Kaya Hart, back again with Living in the New Paradigm. Um, I'm talking with Varushka Normando, and we've been discussing the importance of self-acceptance and self-love. Um, and we live in a society where that's we're not encouraged to love ourselves. But the truth is that you cannot truthfully, deeply, fully love others if you don't Love yourself. And um, so anyway, Varushka, I'd like you to say some more about that. And how can we learn? How can we learn self-acceptance? Do you think that we need to go through the kind of hard times that you went through? Um, maybe it's not everyone's path, but I, I have found tremendous value in my hardships. And maybe that's because I, I've kind of grew up going through the fire um, and I'm pretty resilient, and I feel like I can take a lot. So the shit really has to hit the fan for me to really, like, crack. <laughs> and so, yeah, it does seem like mm -hmm. a little more intense or a little more dramatic. But, but I realize, mm -hmm. you know, we all have our own dramas. But one thing, you know, like that I was saying about my last five years in Hawaii was, you know, the hardships that have come up, I could never in a million years have predicted or thought I would encounter or suffer through. And one of them really was, um, you know, as a gregarious triple Leo who's very loyal and always has best friends, my isolation and my, my perceived um, alienation was one of the hardest things, um, you know, that I've been through as an adult, you know, to be in this part of my life and settling down and thinking I know who I am and then have no one to share it with, you know, having a partner, but yet, mm -hmm. you know, I think we all need community and connection to thrive. So I feel like it was a period mm -hmm. of, okay, who are you if nobody wants to play with you? What's your value oh, if there's nobody that to speak to or reflect with? 
And so Mm -hmm. it really was um, total victim consciousness here. (laughs) It's like, it's not fair. And being so angry and so triggered, you know, we're all into the same things in our part of the island. And and yet have like no one to go to yoga class with, nowhere to teach yoga because no one ever calls you back. No one to yes. um, go to the beach with. Hey, you want to go mm-hmm. snorkeling or hiking? Like nobody. Mm-hmm. And to not take that personal is really hard to not take that <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yes, that's right. Yes. And so, but, yeah. but then the high, the uh, the upside of that was it put me on the path of creation to think, and that's where you know I really learned that it's not too late to try new things because that was my only option was yes. to try new things. And I started, you know, mm-hmm. I've always been a nature lover and a mermaid and connected to the ocean and nature and the mountains. And, um, but it really, it awoken me to the flowers and I started making flower essences and, and those types of energy mm-hmm. medicine and, uh, and the art, mm-hmm. which, um, as a side effect, the art, doing the art opened up parts of me that reawakened my love for photography, which I was a passionate photographer mm-hmm. in my early twenties and, and, get, and gave mm-hmm. it up and it just came in full force and it opened a whole other world and it really exploded my photography. So it just had all these uh, doing That's something great. that was beyond my mind, fitting and enduring, trying to create art affected every other part of my life. And um, <clears throat> now it's really amazing that um, after these five years, I feel like my alone time is my, 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 greatest currency it is it is what i Uh covet the most it is what i protect it is it's everything to me and um Mm. you know and and that too in our society is in a way frowned upon because there's a difference between you know loneliness and then true fulfillment and alonement and being alone and that mm-hmm. self love like like if so if no one you know if you call out and there's no echo, you know, does that mean you're alive? And that's kind of what I was questioning. Like, do I exist? Am I a ghost? Because there's Uh, no one even responding to me. Or I wrote my first ebook mm -hmm. online and I was like so excited about it and I had no one to read it to say like, oh, this is good or, Um, or, you know, let me edit it for you. And mm -hmm. it was the weirdest thing to have these internal victories and really zero reflection from the outside world and you know what six months later i read it and i was like wow this is really good and this is really well written and (laughs) to really come to the point (laughs) to the point where i approve of myself and that's all that matters you know or to do these paintings that i think are childish and to be to still be go beyond the shame you know and that's one of my biggest um um, saboteurs is you know shame that the, the shame is such a deep thing that that you know having yes. childhoods like you and I it's like that's our biggest mm-hmm. identity at the end of the day and to to combat that shame rejection unworthiness with creativity mm-hmm. and actually approve of yourself it, that is the biggest rebellion and the biggest act of self-love is then the self-acceptance to get to the point where it does not matter what anyone else thinks. Um, you yeah. know, because if you look that back and go, would I have done it any different? Yeah. And go, no, actually, I stand by it. You know, that's all I could do yes. at that moment Good. in time. And I'm okay with it. And um, yeah. that's made me grow tremendously. And then thus, yeah, no, I think that is so much I, more. I, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So yeah, yeah, the power. Yeah. So and well, that's I think, why I even yeah. started cha- sharing my art or sharing my my healing selfies and things like that because it's mm-hmm. like, well, people are gonna judge me till they judge me, but I'm also then giving anyone else permission because if they're way better than me, then they're gonna feel better about themselves, right? <laughs> yes. So either yes. way, I'm doing a service. <laughs> I hope I'm gonna inspire either way, you know. And um, yeah. so I recommend that. And that's what the island has gifted me is that power of creativity and the permission to to it. Yes. So at yes. the end of the day, yes. was it shitty that I felt rejected? Not really, because I've gained 
a treasure chest of so much more self-learning and self-discovery and self-expression. Yeah, that's great. So- Verushka, that's really powerful. Um, I want us. I wanted to talk us to talk when I, we come back after this commercial break about the um, power of creativity in Hawaii and what's going on right now. But um, for right now, this is Mikaya Hart with Living in the New Paradigm, brought to us by BBM Global Networks and TuneIn Radio, and we'll be right back after this commercial break. Global Glory. That's the work of Dr. Marina McLean, COO of Global Glory, whose calling is to serve God. God. A first-generation British-born Londoner of Jamaican descent, Dr. McLean inherited the hunger for the Word from her father, who was a Bible teacher. Growing up, her home was filled with missionaries from the Caribbean islands and America, and she travels the world preaching the gospel. She has a Bachelor of Arts degree in theology and an honorary doctorate of divinity and Christian counseling from Friends International Christian University. Dr. McLean is also a songwriter and recording artist, and her songs are written during summits and conferences in the presence of God. She's recorded three worship albums to date and is in ministry for 28 years alongside her husband, Dr. Rennie McLean, who shares her passion. Visit www.globalglory.org or on Facebook at Global Glory. Call 866-244-5679 and feel the glory. Are you looking for employment and live in Los Angeles, Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino counties? Jobs Annex is the place for you. Are you an employer looking to fill a position or quite a few positions in Los Angeles, Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino counties? Jobs Annex is for you. Employers, JobsAnnex.com is your resource for career-minded people. JobsAnnex.com is the convenient place for job seekers and employers to hook up and move forward. Jobs Annex has been serving Los Angeles, Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino counties for over 14 years. Jobs Annex is a former employment search firm. We've evaluated many thousands of resumes and we understand what employers want and what job applicants need to be successful in their interviews. At Jobs Annex, we provide you with the tools to tell your story for free. Our resources at JobsAnnex.com will help each applicant construct an award-winning resume, an eye-catching cover letter, and key interview questions to ask in various types of interviews. Best of all, it's free. JobsAnnex.com. That's J-O-B-S-A-N-N-E-X.com. Hello, everyone. This is me, Kaya Hart, um, with Living in the New Paradigm, and I'm talking with Farushka Normando. Um, Farushka, why don't you give us, um, give our listeners a way of contacting you, phone numbers or websites or whatever? Okay. Um, well, my website is pretty easy. Uh, well, it's not easy. The, the name is Gypsy Rose Chariot, it's all one word, um, dot com. And um, I know my name is is, is long, but um, on Facebook you can find me at gypsyrosechariot.com dot com or and um, Magic Wood Studios on Facebook. That is my photography, my al- alchemical photography. So those are the best ways. And then I also have a YouTube channel called Gypsy Rose Chariot, and I have. Um, interviews with people that um, are also, you know, practicing heart courage Mm -hmm. in the things that they've chosen to do in their life. And also some um, tapping videos in there that are about 15 to 20 minute sessions. So maybe if you go on there, I put together a playlist called Rose Yoga, tapping into heart courage. Mm. And those offer all um, different little things and so it'll give people an idea um what my style and um that really you can say anything you want when you're tapping it's really about honoring it um honoring what you're feeling (laughs) while you're tapping so that'll give people an idea of also the parameters of what they can tap on themselves so that um Gypsy Rose Chariot on YouTube, and all of those things lead to my email and contact information. Good. Well, thank you. And I want to wrap up this show by discussing what the the lava flow that's going on in Hawaii at the moment, because you and I went together to look at it, and so I know that you know uh, you know what I know, and I would like to uh, somehow. Um, uh, express the incredible power of the lava flow and the 
the creativity, the creation, the act of creation. So um, say something about how it made you feel when you were seeing those incredible fountains of fire. Um, well, I've been coming to the Big Island since 2008 um, that I have been actively walking out to the flows and, you know, over hot land and, you know, always just, it's, it's just such a mind-blowing thing. I mean, it, you know, the body kind of freaks out when you feel the steam coming out and all of those things. Um, and we've been living... Um, by in view of the last active lava flow for the last two years that, you know, every day, it's like that, that new earth creation has just been a natural part of my life. And um, I tend to walk out a lot on the, on the lava cliffs where usually I'm the only one out there. And for me, you know, I can't describe how my life ended up here because, you know, I don't never heard anything like this referred to in my astrology or anything how I'm at the, uh-huh. you know, at the cusp of the new earth. But I feel like, yes. um, you know, having that European background and everything with so much history and so much heavy, heaviness and so much suffering, I feel like going out onto those cliffs in that land and the thoughts I'm thinking and the prayers I'm making that I'm, I'm creating history by upgrading, you know, and reframing things that <laughs> haven't been thought before or prayed before, you know, mm-hmm. and um, yeah. being out by these, this new lava has been like being a midwife of sorts. That was, midwife, that's been my yes. experience. Mm. Yeah. Well, that's great. And Yes. Um, so we've reached the end of the show now, but um, thank you very much, Varushka. I feel like your perspective has been incredibly useful. And I would I love more people to hear about your work. So this is Mikaya Hart with Living in the New Paradigm and brought to us by BBM Global Networks and TuneIn Radio. And I'll be back next week. So I hope you all get to tune in then. You've been listening to Living in the New Paradigm with your host, Mikaya. Get what you choose and choose what you get each week here on Mikaya Hart's Living in the New Paradigm. You've been listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company.